Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon to vote for the character you want to see next, and like and subscribe for more scrolls next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Tai Lung from Kung Fu Panda, a cat who got really angry when something he was promised wasn't given to him, so pretty realistic. Feed your cat an hour late, see what happens. The secret recipe for one Krabby Patty is... Blankton? There is no secret ingredient. It's just you. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need Kung Fu. Every kind of Kung Fu, though in D&D there's kind of only one. We'll get a few different styles with some flavor, like ordering various sauces for your nuggets. Next, we need to stop people with a single punch, at least people with less constitution than a panda. Finally, we need to move. Escaping from a pit that requires some big hops, or a flying speed. But you're not a bird. Can you imagine if a panda had to fight a bird? That'd be weird. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Strength will be number one. Obviously, there's going to be some monk levels, but you can choose to become a strong, a strength-based monk, or a donk, a dex-based monk. We're going to go strong this time, but that doesn't mean we don't need dexterity. That'll be number two. You're almost as fast as you are strong. Wisdom after that, your reflexes are like that of a cat. You are a cat that checks out. Follow that up with intelligence. You have to know the history of kung fu if you're learning every type of kung fu. Constitution is a bit low. We're just not going to get hit and we'll dump charisma. Other than intimidation, you're not great at convincing people to do what you want. Tai Lung is a cat, so he's either a Leonin or a Tabaxi. Really, the only difference is doing the roar. But Shrek is the only DreamWorks character that's allowed to do the roar, so we have to go for Tabaxi. That'll give you plus two strength and plus one wisdom, because those are the stats I want, and Tasha's let me put them anywhere. If you don't like that, go spend a few years in a pit and swear revenge on me. Otherwise, I will not care. Tabaxi gets 60 feet of dark vision, feline agility, which is what Tabaxi gets instead of scary roar, which lets you double your movement speed for one round. After you use it, you won't be able to use it again until you spend a round in the same place. You can still make a bunch of attacks though, so just use it to blast in and rip people up. Cat's Claws will make your unarmed attacks deal 1d4 plus your strength modifier in slashing damage if you want them to, and you get a 20 foot climbing speed, pretty useful for getting out of a pit. All Tabaxi get perception and stealth for free, that doesn't mean that you have to use stealth, you can just run in roaring if you want. For your background, Soldier gives you athletics and intimidation for efficiency and Shifu really only trained you to fight. Then you got denied a promotion for being too violent. Seems like that's on Shifu. Speaking of training, monk time, giving you two skills from the monk list like acrobatics and history. History is on the monk list, but perception isn't. I don't make the rules folks, so it's good that you get perception from Tabaxi. Monks get martial arts letting you make unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier and an extra unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one with your action. You can still use your strength though, so it's okay that yours is higher. You were holding two boulders over a pit the entire time you are in prison, that's gonna make you pretty buff. You can't use that with armor on, but you definitely aren't wearing any. So it's a good thing you got on armored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. Cats hate wearing clothes, but they don't hate multi-classing, I guess. Technically, I don't know how they feel about it, but barbarians can enter a rage to resist bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage, get advantage on strength checks and saves, and extra damage to your strength-based attacks for a minute at a time. If Ugwe didn't want you to be angry, maybe he should have given you the dragon scroll, especially considering considering that it's blank. Can you imagine if you spent your whole life trying to get one thing, were told you couldn't have it, got sent to jail, broke out, fought the animal Avengers, and then found out the thing you wanted was nothing? That would make me feel pretty reckless. I'd even go to Barbarian level 2 for a reckless attack, letting me make my attack with advantage while giving my enemies advantage on attacks against me. It's understandable if you're a little too angry to make good decisions. Danger Sense gives you advantage on dexterity saving throws against spells and traps you can see. Since we kick things off as a monk, you have proficiency with dexterity saving throws, and maybe we're gonna get something even better. Who knows? Third level Barbarian is what we're here for because I want claws. Better claws than the ones we have. Path of the Beast Barbarians get a form of the beast, giving you a simple melee weapon of your choice, bite, claw, or tail. Simple melee weapons can be monk weapons if they don't have the heavy or two-handed property, these do not. Bite deals 1d8 plus your strength modifier and lets you heal an amount equal to your proficiency bonus when you're below half your health. Claws deal 1d6 slashing damage and let you make one more attack per round. A tail lets you deal 1d8 piercing damage with reach and add a d8 to your AC as a reaction against a single attack. Tai Lung can attack with his tail, but not really like this. The other two are more in character and pretty dang solid options as well. You can also scoop up another barbarian skill like survival for free, helping you hunt down your foes like they're animals. They are animals. That checks out. Fourth level barbarians get another ability score improvement or feat. The skill expert feat will round up your strength score, give you another skill like sleight of hand and expertise in a skill, doubling your proficiency bonus with it. I'm going to choose acrobatics since we won't be able to invest in dexterity quite as much as I'd like. If you want an extra attack, the only class that gets it is monks. So we're 
we're gonna bounce back to Monk now. Second level Monks get key points they can use to do cool Leopard stuff like Step of the Wind to dash or disengage with a bonus action and double your jump distance for the round. That's even better with Feline Agility and primarily using Strength instead of Dexterity since Strength is what determines your jump distance. Patient Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action which can neutralize the penalty of Reckless Attack by giving your enemies disadvantage to hit you. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks as a bonus action. Remember, your Beast Barbarian form weapons are simple weapons, not unarmed attacks, but your claws from Tabaxi are unarmed attacks. So, your claws are weapons, but your claws are unarmed attacks. That makes sense, right? If it doesn't, you get unarmor movement, increasing your movement speed while you're not wearing armor, which is also busted on a Tabaxi. You're going to be just about the fastest a character could be without a spell that rhymes with taste. Third level monks can deflect missiles, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level, and even yeet it back with a key point as long as you can hold it in one hand and reduce the damage to zero. Ty grabs those ballista bolts one-handed, so I'm counting it. You also can choose a monastic tradition, and this is where things get really, really, really fun. Kensei monks can choose a melee and ranged weapon to become Kensei weapons, so choose the claws or the bite attack, and you can use agile parry. That'll let you add two to your AC when you make an unarmed attack as part of your action if you're holding the Kensei weapon. I think you're holding your claws or teeth, like they're attached to you, or you could just make a Kensei shot, adding a d4 of damage to your ranged attacks with Kensei weapons. With your movement speed, I would recommend getting up close and personal. Finally, you get way the brush for calligraphy tools. Maybe the dragon scroll is empty because you were supposed to fill it in with the power of the gods. Four level monks get another ability score improvement, cap off your strength, you're a little more focused on damage than defense. You also get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, so being belly bumped into the stratosphere won't kill you. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, they're the only class that does, for two attacks with your action, three with your barbarian claws, and you can still make a martial arts or flurry of blows attack with your bonus action for a heck of a combo, especially since your monk die bumps up to a d6, so now your tabaxi claws also deal a d6 like your barbarian ones. You also get stunning strike, letting you spend a key point to force a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit with a weapon attack, failing that they're stunned until the end of your next turn. Apparently, the Furious Five didn't invest in constitution. I'm sure that Poe guy didn't either. You're gonna be fine. Six level monks get key empowered strikes, and Kensei monks get magical Kensei weapons, making all of your attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances, as long as you're using unarmed attacks or Kensei weapons. Which, yeah, don't use other stuff. You're always gonna have unarmed strikes. Nobody's gonna catch you without fingers. You also get deft strikes, letting you add your monk die to the damage of one Kensei weapon attack per round, just putting an extra d6 on one slash. Seven level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage from failed dexterity saves and no damage on successful ones. It pairs really well with danger sense and saving throw proficiency, even if our dexterity isn't quite as high as I'd like. You also get stillness of mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening as an action. Tai Lung does not have time to be afraid, though it's not like Poe is all that intimidating anyway. Eight level monks get another ability score improvement, bumping your wisdom will increase your AC and your stunning strike DC, so that that'll make it easier to take on five fighters at once. Ninth level monks get unarmored movement improvement, letting you move up walls and over water without falling in, as long as you end your turn somewhere solid. At this point, you can move 270 feet with feline agility, a dash action, and a step of the wind dash that should cover you just about anywhere you need to go. Tenth level monks get purity of body, making you immune to poison and disease, unlike me, a dingus who caught COVID-19. I can't taste anything, and it sucks. Please go get vaccinated and wear a mask when you shop for groceries. Eleventh level Kensei monks can sharpen the blade, spending a key point to add one to the attack and damage rolls of a Kensei weapon, or up to three key points for plus three instead. Pairing that with plus two damage from your rage and your Kensei attacks will have a plus ten damage modifier that'll deal very consistent damage with advantage on the attacks, and eight plus your proficiency bonus to hit. Your monk die also bumps up to a d8, which means that both of your claw options deal a d8, whether from Tabaxi or Beast Barbarian. Twelve level monks get another ability score improvement, keep working that wisdom modifier higher. If you can get it higher than Shifu, maybe you can beat Shifu. 13th level monks get Tongue of the Sun and Moon, letting you communicate with any creature that speaks at least one language. It's mostly a flavor thing, but don't worry, we're gonna get something much more practical next level. 14th level monks get Diamond Soul, giving you proficiency with all saving throws. It's as close as you can come to mastering every form of Kung Fu after you've already gotten martial arts and martial weapon proficiency. 15th level monks get Timeless Body, so you no longer feel the effects of age. You still do age though, just not noticeably, kind of like Ian McShane in real life. Our capstone is the 16th level of monk for an ability score improvement to cap off your wisdom modifier, being your stunning strike DC 19. That means you can fight people who are basically standing still. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is.
does. First, you've got Sharpen the Blade and Rage to add damage to between 4 and 5 attacks per round, making your damage very, very consistent. You also have proficiency with every saving throw and advantage on dexterity saves from Barbarian, so special effects shouldn't be anything to fear. Finally, you're very fast with 55 base movement speed, 110 with feline agility, the ability to dash twice with Step of the Wind for 330 feet in a single turn with a 60-foot horizontal leap and 16-foot vertical leap. For weaknesses, you're pretty low on HP with only a little more than 100 depending on how you roll. You're also not great at ranged attacks. Thrown weapons are probably going to be your best bet, and thrown weapons aren't very good. Finally, you only have three rages per day, so if your fights last longer than three minutes, you're going to deal less damage and take more. Thankfully, you're definitely wrapping things up in three minutes. Sharpen your claws, run wherever you want, and get your revenge. Just hope that your enemies will be susceptible to stunning strike. You're not as good of a warrior when the fights drag on. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon to vote for what character you want to see next, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.